Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter 3 talking about static testing and we are still continuing with 3.1 static testing basics and as a part of today's tutorial we'll be getting into 3.1.3 that is differences between static testing and dynamic testing. So let's exactly see how does static varies from dynamic testing. Well, to talk about this particular section, we are going to talk about the key differences between the static and the dynamic testing. However, we'll also be telling you what kind of benefits we can have in terms of conducting static testing and what are those typical defects which we can find out very easily with help of static when compared to dynamic testing. In order to start, let's have a quick discussion on how static testing can be really, really beneficial in terms of being conducted and how it is being different from dynamic testing. So static testing and dynamic testing practices complement each other. They have similar objectives, such as supporting the detection of defects in work products, but there are also some differences, such as static and dynamic testing with analysis of failures can both lead to detection of defects. However, there are some defects types that can only be found either by static or dynamic testing. In simple words, there are some interesting defects which are related to only the documentation part. For example, finding an inconsistency in the requirement. Talking about high coupling, low cohesion of the designs, I cannot identify them by executing the product or executing the code. But when I review the designs and I can review the requirement, I can easily identify these ground level anomalies in the documentation. So it's much cheaper and much easier to identify such defects using static testing. However, when it comes to the dynamic approach, that is using the product, the UI related defects, the functionality issues or the users challenges being faced while working on the system, I can easily detect them by doing dynamic testing, but not by going through documentations. Uh, in some point, I can even say that a requirement may look very, very meaningful while reading it in a requirement documentation or specification, but may sound useless when it gets implemented. So that's how static and testing certainly brings you a different set of defects and they have their own value at their own place. So we must recognize the need of each of these and apply them appropriately. Additionally, to add a static testing finds defects directly while dynamic testing causes failure from the associated defects and are determined through subsequent analysis. So one key difference again, static testing, if I'm reading a work product, I can directly find the defect right in the documentation while I'm going through it. But in dynamic, I see a failure. From failure, I identify a defect. Defect goes through RCA, which is root cause analysis, and root cause analysis determines the main reason behind the failure. That means it takes a longer way to do it. So not a direct way to get to the exact reason of the failure. So it takes longer than static testing. Another one is static testing may more easily detect defects that lay on paths through the code that are rarely executed or hard to reach using dynamic testing. However, of course, we told you in our last tutorial that uh, static testing is also conducted with help of tool, which we call it as static analysis. So static analysis will be capable of detecting and getting into each and every part of the code and easily identifying the anomalies in it. But dynamic testing, if the user does not go to that particular part or that's not a usual scenario, I may not be able to execute every single segment of my code in order to find a defect. Additionally, if I talk about, again, comparison, the static testing can be applied to non-executable work products, while dynamic testing can only be applied to executable work products. So say, for example, if I'm talking about a user manual, which generally we get with any kind of work product. Of course, user manual is just a documentation, a piece of booklet which is given to you with the product, but it's not executable, right? So you only review them. So you can't take that into dynamic testing, but certainly user manual is a good candidate of static testing. Additionally, further to talk about, we do have static testing can be used to measure quality characteristics that are not dependent on executing the code. For example, maintainability, which means uh, the maintenance of the code, the way you have written the number of commands, indentation, the blocking, etc. 
and while dynamic testing can be used to measure quality characteristics that are dependent on executing the code, which things like security testing or performance testing, etc. That means I can just review them. I have to run it with desired amount of load. So put together, there are very interesting key differences between static and dynamic testing, which clarifies any individual that how these two are independent of each other. And at the same time, they both are applicable in any particular project. Nothing is optional. So we, in our discussion right before a moment, we told you that there are certain defects which can be easily found by static testing when compared to dynamic testing. So we want to give you a quick list of those sample defects here, which talks about what are those defects which can be easily found by static testing. And these are just a comprehensive list of document list of defects. It may not be like you have got everything what you need. So it's just a typical list of those defects which we quite often commonly get while get doing static testing. So of course, in your process, in your pro work product, you may have something more than what we are talking about. But this gives you all that fundamental learning and understanding of what kind of defects are we talking about. So let's quickly have a look at this list. So number one, uh, typical defects that are easier or cheaper to find through static testing include, when it comes to requirement, I have inconsistencies, ambiguities, contradictions, omissions, inaccuracies, or duplications. Similarly, when it comes to design defects, I have inefficient database structures, poor modularization, etc. Certain types of coding defects, which includes variable with undefined values, undeclared variables, unreachable or duplicated code, or excessive, excessive code complexity. When it comes to coding standards, so deviation from the standards include lack of adherence to naming conventions in coding standards, same way when it comes to interfaces, which is like API and web services. So we do talk about mismatching of numbers, types, or order of parameters between the calling and the call structure. Specific types of security vulnerabilities, which include things like buffer overflow. And when I talk about even the test basis coverage or traceability, we may have gaps or inaccuracies between them, which includes missing test for an acceptance criteria. So traceability, we do know from chapter one already, that they mainly talk about linking two different components of the project. And if I don't have a test case written for a requirement, then I know it's not possible, but maybe the linking is missing. So traceability is missing and that can be easily reviewed and identified right from a static testing. So put together, that's all from this particular segment, what we had. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.